again, unless you're a vegetarian, then you're not doing any ribs, okay? So anyway, these ribs were frozen and I, un I defrosted them. I had, they're in a bag and I put them in cold water, all right? And the best way to defrost is just to keep it in the cold water and let it come to, you know, defrost naturally that way. Don't leave them out on the counter. It's not going to work, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to get this, um, this, the skin, which is called um, the membrane off of here. All right. And you're just going to get a, a little sharp knife and you're going to cut this. Now, the reason why you want to cut this off is that there's a lot of grease in the, um, the ribs and the You're going to try and get that membrane. Right. Now, this is probably the most tedious part of this whole operation here, okay, is to get the membrane off. And I did not remove any of it because I wanted to show you how easy it is. But you need to remove this part of the membrane, all right? Let me see. I've got the big comments back over here. And just keep on going. Just pull it off. You see how it's ripping right right here? This is, this is how it should be, okay? If not, you just get that knife and go in and just start cutting it a little bit, all right? And it'll help it out. All right, because you you want to get down into um, the meat part of it. And again, this membrane here is holding all of the fat inside and this part you don't like to eat. Remember, if, if you're ever chewing on um, uh, some ribs and they're like tough, tough part, well, this is the part that they didn't take off. All right. So it's a vital part of doing ribs is to remove the membrane. Okay. Sometimes it's not on there. Once in a while, I'll find it that they already, the, the butcher took, already took it off. All right. But we want to get it all off. Yeah. I'm using my hands. Okay. Y'all no big deal. We're just going to get it all off. On your ribs. All right. Let me put that in the garbage. All right. Rinse my hands off. Put some soap and water. All right. Because I'm going to be seasoning this now. Now, this is the important part here is to season your ribs really good. You can season both sides of it. I'm going to be using this Kansas City um, new rub by Pamper Chef. It just came out June 1st. And so we're going to be using that. And then just a little bit of smoky barbecue flavor on it. All right. Uh, let me see. Who's here that I see? Oh, I love ribs, says Tabby. Thank you, Tabby. I'm loving rubs, ribs too. We haven't made them in a while. All right. There's one. I need to get some salt and pepper too. All right, I always keep just salt and pepper it. There we go. All right, and I'm gonna put a little bit of the smoky barbecue on this side. Now you can let you can let these sit like this for a little bit, all right, or just put them right in. And this side here, we want the fat on here because the fat makes it really um, taste great. And I have the smoky barbecue, just a little bit of smokiness. I'm not a big smoker um, flavor person, so we're just going to use a little bit of it. This one here. The difference between these two is that this one tastes a little bit sweeter, the Kansas City, versus this one just has a smoky flavor, all right? They both taste like the uh, potato chips that you get, the uh, barbecue potato chips. This one certainly does taste like the barbecue, the um, Kansas City ones, okay? There we go. Just put it over it. You're going to nicely rub it in. This is a rub. It is called a rub because you rub it into your, into your meat, okay? We got both sides. All right. Put some more up there. And it says to use, um, uh, this is about a little bit less, a little bit more than a pound of ribs. Okay. Normally this, this recipe calls for um, about three pounds. So you probably use at least double this or even tr uh, triple it. Okay. Uh, and then put in one, t three tablespoons of, mo of, of rub, but I probably use about a good tablespoon for one pound. All right. Just keep on going. Just keep it nicely in there. We got all that going. Let me put some salt and pepper on this side. I'm going to rinse off my hands again. Rinse the hands off again. Put some salt and pepper on this side. All right. Okay. And a little bit of pepper. I'm using the Pampered Chef salt and pepper shakers. All right. Now, the, we're going to be doing the, these ribs in the quick cooker. All right. The quick cooker is the Pampered Chef um, uh, Instapot, a pressure cooker. All right. And we're going to need one cup or six ounces of either root beer, but I use Pepsi because that's what my mom has. All right. And I'm not sure she has a half a cup in there, half of, half of, uh, a can in there. So I'm going to see how much we have. There we go. Put it there. Let's see. If we can put that. And yeah, we're using Pepsi here. 
and I need at least six ounces. Let me see how much we have. Oh, perfect amount. My mom left me exactly six ounces out of 12. Man, she did really good about measuring herself a half a cup of half a can of soda, right? So that's all we're going to need. So a rack of rack of, of ribs, which I'm only doing one, one pound with one tablespoon of rub and then six ounces of the liquid. You do need liquid in your uh, pressure cooker because that's what brings it to pressure. Okay. Is a liquid um, in there that generates the pressure. All right. And then eventually we're going to do some barbecue sauce, but right now that's pretty much it. That's all we're going to do. What kind of ribs are you using? We're using um, beef or uh, pork ribs, pork ribs, all right? I'm gonna flip the camera around now because we're gonna be going over to the quick cooker right here. Let me see if I got I got you all in there. And again, this is a Pamper Chef little baby here. It has a lot of safety features, such as the handles down here that if you wanna put it on the shelf, it's really easy to um, use. Uh, it does have uh, the, this part here is where the steam comes out and it needs to be level. If this is askew, the air, uh, the uh, steam won't capture inside and it'll never come to pressure. So make sure that this is flat. There's two little uh, uh, clouds. They need to be going in the same direction. And then you have a button back here and this pink red button pops up and you won't be able to open it. Right now we can open it. And here it sounds like R2D2. We're actually gonna open it. And it's a stainless steel um, pan inside, all right? Never fill past the fill line. There's like a little line uh, maximum because otherwise it won't come to pressure either. But we're just going to gently put in our ribs right into our pressure cooker. Just, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I was supposed to slice it up, y'all. I'm going to slice this up. Hold on a second. We got to flip this around. I forgot to do one thing, y'all. We forgot to slice the ribs. I don't want to have big old chunks. I'm going to uh, cut right into it. There, there, let's get one down. I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm using, I'm just using this. This is a um, paring knife by Pampered Chef. All right, there we go. We're gonna get that one all the way down. There we go. So I got two pieces, one for my mom here and then one for me. And then I went down cause this is the biggest, the thickest one. And it's gonna be one for my mom, one for me. Okay, and so I'm gonna put that in there also. All right, let's flip us back over. Oops. Now are in the quick cooker, all right? Let me rinse my hand off again. Yeah, always rinsing, all right? And washing your um, your hands, all right? Let's see if I can put you further up so you can see what's inside and what I'm doing, all right? There you go. There you go. All right, so we got all that. Of uh, Coca Cola or root beer, whatever one you want to use. If you want to use cherry coke, that works well too. All right, so we got that. We're going to put our lid on again. Make sure that you have the lining, lining inside of it. This little thing makes it come to pressure. If it's out, it will never come to pressure. If it's askew, it won't come either. Uh, and again, the little button will come up. Okay, and we're going to put this on. Sounds like R2D2. And down here, let me bring you further down. You can see what we're doing on back here. Customize it. But today we're gonna use the um, uh, beef, oops, the beef and poultry, beef, beef and pork, beef and pork. So just go right over. And this thing makes the best cheesecake, y'all. If you ever want cheesecake, it makes the best thing. And we're gonna put start, press start. All right, so this thing's circulating right now. All right, it's gonna to come to pressure. It's gonna take about 10 minutes to come to pressure and about 35 minutes to cook because it says 30, it said 35 on there. And then we need 10 minutes for it to uh, depressurize. But in the meantime, we have stuff to do, all right? We have a lot more stuff to get done in the kitchen, all right? And uh, we got the pasta that was, that was, saying the connection's lost here. Hey, Cloud9, how are you? Hello, Marsha, how are you doing? Okay, usually back, yeah, usually baby back ribs, but these are, these are, I forget what kind. They're pork ribs, I do know that. Uh, let's see, uh, let me scroll back, nine, oops, all right, so we got them all in here. What are you doing today? What, what are you having for dinner today at your house? We're having ribs with pasta salad and some, uh, I'm gonna put tomatoes in the pasta salad, so we're ready to go on that. Let me clean up my little area here. I love, that's what I love about these mats is that 
now that I had uh, beef on this one, I'm going to put it right in the sink and go on to my next um, area, my prep area for the pasta. All right. It's kind of glitchy. says, yeah, I don't know why it's kind of glitchy. That's just the weirdest thing, right? All right. So let's flip us around and keep on going because then we have a little bit of a of a um, trivia coming up also while while the um, ribs are cooking, all right? Hydration Nation, make sure you drink even while you are um, uh, cooking. You still need to drink your water, all right? Oh my God, that is so good, y'all. All right, so the next thing is, oops, we have, we have our knife. I'm gonna use my Santuco knife and I got some peppers over here. Now, the peppers, um, you can do a couple things with these peppers over the weekend, all right? So if you have, um, you can fill these with like different um, ingredients such as like uh, uh, mustard or mayonnaise or ketchup on here and then have people scoop it out. So then when they're done, you just throw them away. But that's pretty expensive, but it is the cutest little idea uh, to use your peppers for your condiments on it. Another use to put, put condiments is, is to get your brownie pan or your muffin pan and put your condiments in your muffin pan and you take it all out at once. And you don't, you don't have to bring out those jars because those um, mayonnaise and the um, uh, ketchup sitting outside just is nasty. Okay. I'm just telling you after a while. Hello, Peter Bittner. How are you doing today? So we're going to be doing up some peppers for our pasta salad. We made the pasta earlier using the microwave pasta cooker. Only one person messaged me for the, um, the cookbook for the microwave pasta cooker. Now I'm going to cut these, just the bottoms off and I'm going to use my, uh, quick slice, the quick, yeah, the, the oh my gosh, the quick slice to uh, slice these up and dice. All right. So we have one. All right. There's one. I'm going to slice this one up there. I'm just doing the ends off these babies and I should All right, so we have our peppers ready to go. We're going to that if your your um, connection is bad, that it ends on other broadcasts, like other, other platforms. So we're going to use a quick slice, and this is going to slice it really quick. Now, if you want to do a vegetable tray, this is the best way to do it. Rock and roll motion. These are all sliced one quarter of an inch. And they are perfect sliced. People are going to say, wow, how do you get them all perfectly sliced? Well, I'll use my quick slice, all right? And so we're going to slice this the other way. All right, just get them in there and slice them this way. And now you have a perfect little dice. They're like one quarter of an inch dice. All right. So we got one down. Let me, um, let me see if I can put these. I'm going to see if I, well, we'll just put them on the mat. We'll just put them on the mat, y'all. And we'll do up the rest of them. All right. There's one down. We're going to get the yellow one. Again, we're going to slice this baby. There. We're going to pick it up as good as good as we can and turn it the other way. And we're going to dice them. And again, these are great. Uh, if I get one down the bottom. There. Oops. There. There we go. And dice it. All right. Yellow's done. Let's go on and do red red one. And if I wasn't talking, this would already be done, y'all. Okay. Because talking and cooking at the same time takes up twice the amount of time on cooking. All right. Got the red one done. Oops. Got the red done. All right. We're just getting all of our mise en place, all of our veggies to put together in our pasta salad. All right. And then finally we have our orange one. Oops. Again, these would make really pretty dips, all right, uh, veggies for your crudite for this weekend using the quick slice. And if you don't have it, hey, we have a party coming up tomorrow, which is the share rewards. And all the um, tools that you buy on that party will be discounted, okay? So there we go. We got the orange all done. All right, we're all done with that. Let's put that in the sink. And we're going to get some tomatoes out. I got my peppers ready to go. We're going to get tomatoes. Now, this little device is a, a close, close, and cut. And it slices things exactly in half, like chicken breast. You can slice the chicken breast right in half. Your bagels. You put your bagel in here. It's pressurized on both sides, all right? And 
then put it, slice it, and you're going to use a big knife. You're going to use a, use a chef's knife for this one, all right, because you want the knife to be bigger than the uh, device itself. If I use my Santuco knife, it won't it won't slice on the other side. So this hat actually comes as a set with the chef's knife uh, and the closing cut, and you can slice like uh, grapes in here in half, cherries in half. Um, we're doing our tomatoes over here. Anything that you want to slice in half. All right, so these are homegrown tomatoes that my, my, the guy who does my lawn brought me them. And so I'm going to put the tomatoes in here. I need to use some up. All right, and we're just going to put these babies right in here. I'm going to leave these yellow ones. These are pretty. Let's just put a few more in. All right, so you can fill this whole thing up. I don't need the whole thing for my uh, little salad I'm doing. And we're going to slice this right down, put this right down, and we're going to hold it with our hand. And see, it has an edge, so you can't put your hand over it and hurt yourself. So we're going to slice this thing right in half. And again, the gadgets in your kitchen help you cook quicker and faster. And now these are all sliced in half instead of me doing them all individually. All right. Great for grapes, the tomatoes, chicken, um, anything rolled. Then finally, we have one more thing we want to put in here. I actually have onions. I got onions too, y'all. Uh, we're going to slice up some some uh, celery here. But my mom doesn't like the core, this tough skin of the celery on the outside. So I am shredding my, my celery. And I'll put this in my garbage bag right here. Okay. We'll put that in the freezer bag. Because you can save all of your... your um, oops your little scraps and don't throw them away. Okay. And you can put them in your freezer bag and then make some soup stock out of it. All right. So we're going to put this right down, just slice it right in there. I want them to be about a quarter of an inch, just like the peppers, but this, this one I have to do by hand. All right. Put it right down and we're going to hold your knife correctly. Make sure you put your finger here, your forefinger there, wrap your hand around it, and then you can slice it right down. Okay. And let's try and do it into one quarter of an inch. And this is manually slicing everything. Notice I'm doing a rock and roll motion. And we're getting it right up. Okay. Got my tomato going there. All right. That's pretty good. I'm going to leave this off to the side. Again, we're going to put this. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat these, y'all. All right. This is going to go in my scrap bag. Let me get it out of the freezer. All right. And I've been building. I have a couple of these scrap bags in here. Just put that in there so you don't have to throw it away. And you can save all your scraps. Label it. This is from February. I have, like, a couple bags in there. I've just been putting them up. Next, you need an onion, y'all. All right. I would normally do a red onion, but I have this one already cut up. So we'll just do this onion here. All right. And I'm just going to slice this right. Up. Well, cut several different ways. I need a lawn guy, especially one that brings me tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, he brings me a couple different things. So I'm like, okay, I'll take them. Uh, I forgot what he did. He bring me. I forget what he brought me earlier this year, y'all. All right, so we just need a couple little pieces of onion in here, and I'm trying to do it about you know a quarter of an inch, so it's about the same size as the um, everything else over there. And I'm doing this very particularly, okay? Yeah. There. Turn it around. So let's do this other one. Oops. Too far. There. Yeah. And then hold it with your fingers and slice right down. And we got enough onions there. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. All right. Plenty of onions. We don't want to have it too much. I always put my onions in my one cup prep bowl so it doesn't stink up my rest of my refrigerator. Okay. All All right, so now we can put this all together. We got our little pasta that we did earlier. We do, made it in the microwave pasta cooker. And, uh, 
it, it takes about 10 minutes. I did mine 12 because my mom likes hers really soft. All right. And I need to get a bigger bowl for this to serve it in. All right. So let's get a bowl. So I have a little bit of pasta and a lot of veggies there. This is like Rainbow City. If I look at it right there, it's like, wow, that's really pretty color. Especially if we use purple onions, it would have been the color of the rainbows there. All right. Let's put you up there, right there. You're seeing what I'm seeing. the koozie and microwave it. I did it for six minutes. I then I swish. So we're going to get a bowl. I'm going to get the batter bowl, y'all, because, you know, I have a choice of all these bowls here. And I like using the glass bowls here on camera because you can see everything inside and around it, okay? So we're going to add our pasta in here, and I'm going to get my veggies. Just throw in a handful with however you, how much you want. You know, we're going to get all those tomatoes in here. I think I'm going to put all of them in here. Okay, just add all your veggies that you cut up. If you... In there it's more orange okay i got enough for tomorrow for an omelet but i need a one cup prep bowl y'all found one found one found my one cup prep bowl so i'm gonna put my veggies in here now you know a half a cup is one serving right that you need and you need five uh vet servings of vegetables a day five so that's like two and a half cup bowls of one cups here okay let me try and get them all up y'all Got them all up. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so we can make an omelet with this for tomorrow. Cut once, use twice. All right, and we have the rest of our pasta, and we're going to add in some seasonings in here and some olive oil and just a tad bit of vinegar. All right. I wash my hands off, and we're going to get some olive oil. Um, I'm going to count how much olive oil I'm going to put in because, you know, so you know how much I'm using. Hey, Mo, thank you for subscribing again. I use those pretty prep bowls every day. <laughs> I know I use those prep bowls. I mean, I can tell how much leftovers I have in my refrigerator by the amount of, of, of um, bowls I don't have in my, in my cabinet. Okay, so I'm using extra virgin olive oil because extra virgin olive oil is a milder taste than the regular olive oil, okay? Full strength. And this is the, the olive, this is the oil that you use for salads, okay? If you're cooking, then use uh, avocado oil, all right? I'm gonna put a little bit of vinegar in there. All right, and my vinegar that I like to use is rice wine vinegar. You can use any type of vinegar that you have. I don't like a whole lot of vinegar. And these um, measurements aren't exact, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit of vinegar in there, okay? A little, little acidic taste to it. And then we're gonna put some seasonings in here. And of course, you all know my favorite is my garlic and herb. All right, I'm gonna... Let's put that in. Ah, if I, if I can ever get can, uh, these things open, it'd be really, really good. Most of the times I can't do that. And so then I need to get a kitchen paring knife. And instead of hurting my nails, just open it up, y'all. Do y'all have problems opening up lids and the seals? I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all. Like, look, look, like, you think, like, who's going to get in here? <laughs> Definitely sealed, really good. All right, put that away. And get a little bit more. I'm just gonna get it in my hand. And this is this is my, again, this is my favorite one. All right, and we're just gonna put garlic and herb in there. Oh, just smell this, this is good. All right, so there's that. And now we just need to mix it all up, okay? Just mix it all up and let it sit and marinate. All right, uh, salt and pepper. There. 
And you know what? I'm going to put a little basil in here. What do you think about some basil in this? Oh, man, this is looking good, y'all. One popped out just from me. Oh, so good. All right, let's get some basil. All right, let's get some basil. I'm going to get some off the stem here. All right, got some fresh basil in my from my um, plant sitting there, and I'm just gonna chop this up a little bit. Okay, let's just get some some uh, shipping odds of basil. Just get your scissors and put it right in. Fresh basil. Oh my gosh, this is my mouth is watering already. Okay, there we go. So garlic and basil go together really well. All right. All right, let's get this one down. Get some more in there. So my pasta is my starch. My veggies are already included in here. And I'll probably even put another slice of tomatoes on here because I have more tomatoes that my, from my brother's garden. <laughs> All right. I'm put a little more salt in here, okay? Salad looks great. Can't eat it because I'm gluten-free. Okay. Well, you can put your gluten-free pasta in here. There are gluten-free pastas out there. They just take a little bit longer to cook, I believe. There we go. All right. And we can put a little garnish right on top. I'm going to put this back in my... Let me see if I can put this back in my bowl. Because this bowl is so pretty, okay? And since we just mixed it all up. Oops, put it right in. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is looking so good. Okay. And again, just be creative with your seasonings. All right. I'm just using my, my favorite garlic and herb. All right. There we go. Let's put, oh. We can put this back in just like this and I'll put it in my refrigerator. So it'll be nice and chilled when, when the ribs are done in about 24 minutes, actually the ribs are going to be done in 24 minutes, but we have 35 to let it, um, what's it called? Um, pressurize. All right. All right. So we're all done with that. Let me put this over here. We're going to remove this. Again, see how nice I can move this around and put that in my sink to wash later. And I'm looking for my, my sponge. Right. And we can clean up as we go so that we don't have a whole lot to do at the end. All right. Although my sink is full of fishes. All right. There we go. All right, let's see how, how we're doing. All right, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Give me a minute. All right, so I can keep it nice and chilled, all right? There we go. All right. Let me put you over here. Flip you back over. Hello, hello, everybody. It, that looked really good. I haven't tasted it all together, and I'm hoping I had enough salt in there, okay? I found chickpea one, says Missy Mouse, that is gluten-free. There you go. See that um, in Intuitive D? We have, I know there's gluten-free ones out there because I have, I have some, but I haven't used it. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I have these, okay? It's gluten-free, and it is brown rice and quin quinoa penne pasta and this was at, at um walmart all right it does take a lot longer to come to cook though like in the microwave it takes a lot while he's switching back and forth between you and the zoom the computer screen okay i don't know why um that i don't know why that is i'm going to switch it over to the computer screen it says my internet is unstable over on on the computer part let's see oh Let's see, presenting. Nope, we gotta flip it over. Oh, am I on that one? Mm. 
though, I'm doing that. Do presenting. Stop presenting the screen. Please confirm. No. All right, I want to do that. How do I do this? All right. I am having technical dipping. Just in case you want to know, I do want to know, but I can't figure out how this, how to. Um, that's the thing about when you go live, um, you can't you can't get. Like I wanted to show my um, my screen, and I have a have a quiz on there that is trivia. Okay, and it says. Let me see if I can take that one off. Close. Let's close that one out. Remove device. Don't know. More camera. Stop presenting. There we go. Let's stop presenting. Let's see what that does. All right, now present. And we do that. And let's see if I have that. Remove guest. No. It's not showing me it. Connection is unstable. Okay, remove that guest. Cancel. Okay, close. Well, isn't that the word? No biggie. Just think, okay, I got that part. Um, hmm. Hey, Cookie, we're still we're still figuring this thing out. Being a broadcaster and being food. I have a high expectation of what I want to present on screen and to actually get like the trivia that is on my email on here is quite frustrating. <laughs> right? I am not the, I am not tech savvy on this one at all. Uh, let's see if it does it again. Presenting. Okay. Fail pre to present on screen. Try again. All right. No idea. I know I have this camera is over there. Anybody want to come up and walk me through? Let's see if that. Instant full screen. No. Because it's not on there. Hmm. No idea. All right. What if I. All right, let's, since we, since I, I can ask you the questions and then you can, you can give me the answers that would probably work. Right. All right. So which of the traditional, let me see, I can probably even flip you around and you can see on my camera. All right. That will, that will work. Let me get this knife out of the way though. All right. So here, which 4th of July, which 4th of July tradition began in 1777 in Philadelphia. Okay. Your questions are fireworks. March to Congress, cookouts, or ringing of the Liberty Bell. All right, that this will work. This works, y'all. All right. So, what the question is? Which Fourth of July tradition um, began in 1777 in Philadelphia? Fireworks, March to Congress, cookouts, or ringing of the Liberty Bell? Okay. Now I have to answer it, and I hopefully I get it right. Ringing of the Liberty Bell. There you go. Hopefully. Uh, quiz. There we go. Ringing of the Liberty Bell. Uh, I must have pushed the wrong one. Fireworks. Oh my gosh. We we're both wrong, Tim Bears. It was fireworks. Fireworks. I thought it was Liberty Bell. Okay, let's do the next one. First one wrong. Okay, what New York eating contest happens every 4th of July? I know this one. Tim, I know this one, Tim. Uh, is it hamburger eating contest, hot dog eating contest, ice cream eating contest, or donut eating contest? Which New York eating contest happens every 4th of July? Hamburgers, hot dogs, ice cream, or donuts? I'm going with the hot dogs too, because it's it's Coney Island. 
<laughs> and those people eat too many hot dogs. I don't, uh, that's just nasty. Okay. So it says every 4th of July cont- contestants come together at Coney Island to stuff themselves full as many Nathan's famous hot dogs as possible. The story goes that in 1916, a group of immigrants challenged each other at Nathan's famous hot dog stand to eat as many as they could to prove who was the most patriotic. The first official company sponsored contest was held in 1972 when I was 10 years old. The challenge is 10 minutes long and contestants have known to have downed as many 75 hot dogs. Is that with buns too, right? Nathan's bought some of those from (laughs) there. Okay, Missy Mouse is getting smarty pants here. She goes, Nathan's bought some from those guess where, QVC. (laughs) Got that right. My mom... I think she has bought, she did buy hot dogs from QVC, but she didn't like them. They were really thick dogs and they were nowhere near Nathan's or I forget, I buy ballpark, ballpark. What kind of hot dogs do you buy? Oscar Mayer, ballpark, Nathan's. (laughs) Yeah, they are big. (laughs) All right. So let's go to the next one. All right. Next question. All right. Who wasn't, who was the inspiration for Uncle Sam? Uncle Sam is the person says we want you in nineteen in uh, World War Two um, and um, to get people to sign up for the military. Was it the inventor Samuel Morris, the creator's father, meat packer Samuel Wins- Wilson, or our author Samuel Clemens? Okay, so the question is, who was the inspiration for Uncle Sam? The inventor Samuel Morris, the Morris Code person, the creator's father. That guy looked like his dad would have been really old. Uh, Me packer Samuel Wilson or our author Samuel Clemens, the creator's father. I'm going to go with the meat packer guy. This guy looks like him. Ah, there we go. It was the meat packer guy. All right. So Uncle Sam is both a real and fictional person. On the fictional side, he's a personification of a U.S. government. On the real side, he evolved from the meatpacker named Samuel Wilson. During during the War of 1812, I thought it was World War II, Wilson sent beef to the army in barrels stamped U.S., um, US, US United States. The soldiers put their own spin on it and started referring to the food as Uncle Sam's beef. I didn't know that either. Okay. Okay, next question. All right. What happens on the military base at noon on the 4th of July? What happens on the military base at noon on the 4th of July? Everyone changes the street clothes. I don't think so. A parade could be raising an extra flag or a gun salute. Okay. So what happens on the military base at noon on the 4th of July? Do they change their clothes? Do they have a parade? Do they raise an extra flag or they have a gun salute? Do, 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 do. I'm trying to do the Jeopardy theme, if you know. All right, so this one, I'm going to put in gun salute. We white. That was right. What happens on the military base at noon on the 4th of July? Every 4th of July at noon, the military bases around the country hold a gun salute called a salute to the Union. It's somewhat lengthy process as a gun is fired for every state in the country. Okay. Most people got that right. 82% got that right. All right. That was five out of 11. All right. Next one. What was the first state to make 4th of July an official holiday? What was the first state to make 4th of July an official holiday? New York, Virginia, Massachusetts, or Pennsylvania? Put NY for New York, VA for Virginia, MA for Massachusetts, and PA for Pennsylvania. All right. Tim says Virginia. Anybody else out there? Missy Mouse, are you still there? All right. So what was the first state to make 4th of July an official holiday? I'm thinking it's Massachusetts. I'm going for Massachusetts. (laughs) Yeah. I lived up there. Not in Massachusetts, but in Rhode Island. Okay. Massachusetts was the first state to turn the 4th of July into an official state celebration in 1781. Almost 100 years later, 
in 1870, the day become, became an unpaid federal holiday. So it became an unpaid federal holiday in, seven, in 1870. It wasn't until 1941 that Congress decided it should be a paid holiday. It was an unpaid holiday, and then it became a paid holiday in 1941. And only 28% got that one correct. Most people said Pennsylvania, probably because of the Liberty Bell and, and stuff. But I knew that because I was not, I was, I was raised in Pennsylvania. All right. Uh, all right. Next one. What 4th of July favorite was originally called Wander, Wander Kurskin? What is Wander Kurskin? What 4th of July favorite was called Wander Korskin? That's a hard word to say. American flag clothes. American flag clothes. Party poppers. Decorative bunting. Or sparklers. Okay. American flag clothes. Party poppers. Decorative bunting. Or sparklers. What 4th of July favorite was originally called Wander Kurtzkin? Yeah, I'm going with that one too, Tim. I'm going with the, with the sparklers there. We still have um, 11 minutes before our ribs are done. And um, oh, we only have 10 minutes. So we have 21 minutes before I can put them in the broiler. Okay. So let's go with sparklers. There we go. And we are correct on the sparklers. Okay. So let's read this. It says sparklers were invented in Germany in the 1850s. It was a simple process of dipping a thin wire into a paste made of gunpowder and iron. The German word for the invention was Wunderkurtzken, which translates to sparklers. Sparklers were an exhibit with, with the German convoy at the World Columbian Composition in 1893. And within a few years, they were being produced in the United States. All right, so most of the people, they got that one right at 77%. Okay, next question. All right, uh, what state holds the country's oldest 4th of July parade. Okay. What state holds the country's old, the, it's storming out again. Uh, that's why the dog was in the kitchen. Uh, what state holds the country's oldest 4th of July parade? Maine, Texas, South Carolina, or Rhode Island. Okay. Maine is one, Texas is two, South Carolina is three, and Rhode Island is four. Okay. Now remember, where I said I, I, I went to school in Rhode Island. <laughs> Just some of the stuff that you know. All right, so. Yes, it's Rhode Island. Because remember, uh, everything was happening up in Massachusetts. And Rhode Island is the smallest state in the Union. I went to school in Providence, Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, so this one says the oldest 4th of July parade in the country takes place in Bristol, Rhode Island. It has been held annually since 1785, when the tradition was started by a Revolutionary War veteran, Reverend Henry Wright, on the First Congregational Church. The town's patriotic festivities start almost a month earlier on Flag Day, which is June 14th. That's a half a month. <laughs> All right, so 51% got that one right. That's interesting. Texas only got 8%. <laughs> All right, Texas wasn't even brought into Union until later on. All right, uh, then it was, Maine was the second one up, and then I was followed by South Carolina. Next question. All right, what holiday was invented to rival the 4th of July? Now, okay, what holiday was invented, if all these holidays are invented, to rival the 4th of July? Liberty Day, America the Beautiful Day, Flag Day, or Americanizational Day? Americanization Day. All right, so. I don't even know what a Liberty Day is, and I don't know what the American, the beautiful, beautiful day is. Okay. Uh, hey, Aiden, how are you doing? Um, so Flag Day or Amer uh, Americanization Day. Okay. Do, 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 do. We just said it was Flag Day from before, but for some reason, I think this is a trick question. Okay. I want to say that, but why would it be a month earlier to, to, um, rival 4th of July? There you go. 
it was actually Americanization Day. The United States is a country of immigrants, and future Supreme Court Justice Louis um, Brandeis uh, tried to honor that history when he gave a keynote speech at Faneuil Hall. I know where that is. That's in Boston. Uh, in Boston on July 4th, 1915, Brandeis introduced a new holiday that would rival the 4th. Americanization Day. He wanted to honor and bring together both new and old United States citizens. The holiday never took hold, so it didn't happen. No wonder why we don't know it. And everybody, look, everybody said 79% went with Flag Day. 79, only 5% with Americanization. Like, who the heck? We didn't even hear, heard of that one before. Okay, next question. All right, what fish? Okay, and I don't know this one. What fish is traditionally eaten on the 4th of July? What fish? I didn't know there was a fish to eat on 4th of July. I thought it was ribs, hamburgers, and hot dogs. Uh, what fish is traditionally eaten on the 4th of July? Trout, sea bass, salmon, or mackerel? <laughs> okay, take a, Tim, take, take a pick. What fish is, uh, is eaten on the 4th of July? I don't think it's sea bass, and I don't think it's mackerel. We don't even have that down here, okay? So my guess is between trout and salmon. But trout is mostly in uh, brook streams and stuff like that. And salmon is more prevalent in the ocean and in, in rivers, okay? You say trout says that. Mackerel says Aiden. Aiden, I don't think it's mackerel. Uh, Jay Opera says one, trout. Hmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch my mother by her toe. If she hollers, let her go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I, I'm going, I think I'm going with salmon too, Tim. I'm going with the salmon. Yeah, because trout is too hard to pick. Yeah. Next question. So back in the early days of the 4th of July holiday, New Englanders, remember, New England would eat salmon to celebrate. It was almost out of necessity. Salmon runs were happening where salmon runs were happening throughout the states and it was easy to catch them. See, that's why I was thinking those that brat, truck, the, the trout takes too long to, to um fish. Today, there are fewer fish to catch, but the tradition stays strong in New, New England. So the trout got 50, uh, 38%, sea bass 12, salmon was 28, and 23 mackerel. Okay, on that one. Next question. We're on our last one, I think. Why did John Adams protest the 4th of July? Okay, why did Samuel Adams protest the 4th of July? Hey, hey uh, Jay, you hear that thunder? We're having a thunderstorm. All right. Did John Adams think he wanted it on a different day? He didn't want independence. That's not true. He signed the declaration. He was mad at Thomas Jefferson. And I don't think those guys got mad at each other like they do now. He was afraid of fireworks. Well, fireworks didn't come after. Him. Okay. So there's only one logical cool, uh, um, answer on this one. He wanted it on a different day. Because I don't think he was mad at Thomas Jefferson. Nothing in the, in the history books said that. He didn't want uh, independence because he signed the declaration. And fireworks didn't come until the year later. So, ding, different day. There you go. Why did John Adams produce a breath of July? The Continental Congress uh, was voted in, ununanimously, not unanimously, ununanimously for independence on July 2nd. And signed the Declaration of Independence two days later on July 4th. Okay, so this contradicts what you said, Aiden, earlier this morning, that actually the independence was uh, declaration was signed in August. But this is saying that it was signed two days later on July 4th. John Adams believed Independence Day should have been the second day of the month, not the fourth. He regularly protests the holiday by turning down invitations to the event on July 4th. Okay, 60 percent got that one right. So that was pretty that was pretty good. <laughs> 22% said he said he was mad at, Je at Jefferson, uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson. All right, so that was that one there. Oops, what other countries? Okay, here's another one. What other country celebrates a holiday on July 4th? What other, what other country celebrates a holiday on July 4th? Singapore, the Philippines, Morocco, or France? Okay, so what other country celebrates a holiday on July 4th? Singapore, the Philippines, Morocco, or France? France is July 13th. Okay, we'll get that one out of the way. All right, what do you think about the Philippines is, is closely related to the United States, so I'm thinking they, they might celebrate it right over there. Three, you're thinking Morocco? All right, anybody else? Tim? 
Philippines, I think, says Aiden. Philippines, says Aiden. Anybody else for the Philippines? All right, we're going to go with Aiden's. Ooh, there you go. It says the Philippines celebrates it. In the Philippines, July 4th is a day to celebrate not the independence of the United States, but independence from, from the United States. On July 4th, 1946, the two countries signed the Treaty of Manila, officially giving the Philippine independence from the U.S. rule. In the Philippines, July 4th is called Philippine Republic Day. And 42% got that one right. 39% did France. 13% Singapore and 6% Morocco. Hey, Andy, how you doing? All right. So that does that. That was pretty good. What do you think? All right. Let's see if I can get into another one. Let's see if I, can I get into my email? Um, okay, let's go back, go back, go to the unread ones. There's one in here that y'all would be really interested in. And Aiden, this is definitely one for you. Let me see if I can find my email. I think this is the wrong email. <laughs> That's my mom's email. Oh, let's see if I can get one. Can we do Alexis email? No. All right, Alexis Bryce email. No, I don't want that. Oh my God, my mail. Oops. All right, so our, we have 10 minutes. That was our alarm for the uh, ribs and the quick cooker. It means they're done, but then we need 10 minutes for it to. Um, all right, so I got Alexis Bryce on here. And let's see if we can go down and get the other one. Um, did I flag it? Daily quiz. Uh, this one. This one's for you, Aiden. Let's see how fast we can go through this. All right, Aiden. This is, the, and Andy too, Andy, because Andy would know this. And I think Tim might know this. Which side dish is commonly served with fish and chips? Mushy peas, blood pudding, sliced oranges, or whipped cream? Don't think it's whipped cream with fried trash, okay? I don't even know what blood pudding is. Orange slices sound good, but I've never heard of orange slices with fried food. Mushy peas, there you go. Oh, we have to do it on this one here. All right. Next question, which, okay. So it is, is sir, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through all the things. Nothing goes with traditional British uh, pub food quite like mushy peas, typically made uh, with marrow fat peas. The side is popular with fish and chips as well as meat, pies, and roasted lamb. Next question. All right. I don't even know how you say this word. Eccles cake are traditionally filled with what fruit? Blueberries, passion fruit, currants, or kiwi? Since I saw a picture right here, this is a hint, all right? Don't think it's blueberries and it's not kiwi. Carrots. Yes. Always mushy peas. All right. Next question. See if I can get these. Let's see how fast we can go. Oh, okay. I don't know what the heck these are, but y'all need to make this on, on, on uh, broadcast here. Scotch eggs consist of hard boiled eggs encased in what? Bacon, sausage, seaweed, or cheddar cheese. Y'all have to figure this out. They're Lancaster cakes. All right, so where are they encased in? I don't think it's seaweed. Let's rule that one out. Sausage meat. Okay, sausage. There you go. Sausage meat. Oh, my gosh. They made only breakfast invented by a department store, Fort Nunn and Mason in 1738. The hard-boiled eggs are encased in a sausage and breadcrumbs. 56 people, 56% got that correct. Next one, which vegetable is known as courgettes in the United Kingdom? And I know this one because I broadcast so often and I used to watch people, uh, well, Aiden and Anne and, and everybody over in France, they all called courgettes zucchini. <laughs> there you go. Oh, next one. Which food is not part of a traditional full English breakfast? Now, Aiden, you've done this already before. Which one is not part of a traditional full English breakfast? Mushrooms, oatmeal, tomatoes, or toast? I'm thinking oatmeal. <laughs> I'm thinking oatmeal. <laughs> Yay! Oatmeal. All right, we've got three minutes left. Next question. Which sweet treat is known in the UK as candy floss? I know this one. I know this one. 
cotton candy. Y'all c- call that stuff candy floss. Australians even know even more whimsical calling it fairy floss. Okay, in Australia, they call it fairy floss. We call it cotton candy. Next question. Jamie Dodger. Jamie Dodger is a type of what? Now, this has like a nice little picture over here. Biscuit, frozen meat, breath mints, or tea. What's a Jamie Dodger? What's a Jamie Dodger? Have you done this before? It's either a biscuit or tea. I say biscuit. There's biscuits up here. Biscuit. Yay! Introducing, I don't know what that ends by a Brits called French fries, chips, and cookies biscuits. If you know what a Jamie Dodger is, it's a delicious kind of sandwich cookie with tasty jam between two shortbread biscuits. You really know them as English treats. Okay. Next question. What does the top layer of a Lancaster hot pot consist of? Whipped cream, pastry, sliced potatoes, or whole sausage? I don't think it's whipped cream. <laughs> What's a Lancaster hot pot? I love Tammy Dodgers. What's a Lancaster hot pot? Pastry? Sliced potatoes? Okay. Yay! Aiden got that right. He lives over there. <laughs> Lancaster Hot Pot is a pub classic fe- featuring plenty of familiar ingredients. A lamb stew is topped by a layer of sliced potatoes, then baked until the potatoes are golden brown. Which school inspired the name Strawberry and Meringue Dessert? Do, 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 do. Oxford, Cambridge, Harrow, or Eaton? We're eating because we're eating the strawberry and meringue dessert. <laughs> okay, which school inspired the name of a strawberry and meringue dessert? Aiden says eaten. And he got it right. Leg- legend has it before a cricket uh, c- before a cricket game between Eaton College and Harrow College, a strawberry meringue and, uh, and cream pudding was was dropped, then hastily scooped up to serve the students. While it is it's hard to confirm the legend veracity. The name Eaton Mess stuck. That was divided <laughs> pretty well. All right, which beer? Oh, you got this one right, Aiden. I, I can't imagine you getting this wrong. Which beer variety or originated in England? IPA, wheat beer, Pilsner, or Dunkel? IPA, wheat beer, Pilsner, or Dunkel? Which beer variety originated in England? I don't know where Harrow College is, Jay. <laughs> Eaton Mess Melody made it. <laughs> Did she really? <laughs> oh, was that for the dessert Saturday <laughs> on Haps? All right, so which beer? IPA, says Jay. Is he right, a- a- Aiden? Aiden, is this right? The IPA? I don't think it's Dunkel. That sounds like it's a German beer. Indian Pale Ale. Oh, see, IPA over here sounds something else. It's like independent blank ale product. I don't know. Okay, IPA. You got it right, IPA. In the 1780s, a brewer named Hodgson created a pleasantly bitter, high pop content beer that could survive the long journey from England to India. The result was a prototypical Indian pale ale commonly referred to as IPA. That was across the board. They took a guess. All right. Hot cross buns. We like hot cross buns. They're served around Easter time, right? Uh, are traditionally eaten, eaten on which holiday? Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth's birthday. Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas. Good Friday or St. Patrick's Day. Only a fan of hot days. <laughs> it's bitter. Oh, So hot cross buns are traditionally eating on what holiday? Queen Elizabeth's birthday, Boxing Day, Good Friday, or St. Patrick's Day. I'm thinking the same thing because I just said it was Easter when those things come out. You see them in the grocery store. Okay. Hot cross buns are pastry treated that can be served hot or cold and are typically eaten on Good Friday and Easter. Ice buns contain milk, which was traditionally forbidden during Lent, but becomes a fair game starting Good Friday. All right. I got to put my broil away. Oops. We got to put you back for a second because I got to, I got to, um, put my broiler on for a second. Oh, let's get that. And I got to move my tray. All right. So 
this is in my oven. All right. And I got these nice little protectors on here. All right. That save my fingers and arms from getting burnt. In my oven. And we're going to turn on our broiler and start. 525 degrees. All right. So we got that going because we have two minutes left for the, for the quiz here. Alexis, I love your black spot. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Next question. Which herb is known in the UK has coriander? Now, we already know that one because we all deal with this. Hey, Aunt B, thank you so much for the um, high five award. What herb in the UK is known as coriander? Cilantro. Alexis got this one right without asking y'all. <laughs> all right. Next one. We only have, we have two more questions. Next. What, oh, a kipper is what is a kind of what? A kipper. Fish? Sausage, pastry, or liquor? I don't think it's liquor. I think you eat kippers and you eat them for breakfast. I think it might be fish. All right. Fish? Tim Bear says fish. Tim Bear says fish. So does Jay says fish. Ah, Y'all are right. Fish. Kippers. Kipper fish. Kipper is a smoked and salted herring, which has been split in half. They're often purchased by, by the tin and are commonly eaten as a breakfast food. 92% got that one right, y'all. They all know what kippers are. Next one. What, which kind of pudding is made from split peas? Mushy peas, no? All right. Bread and butter pudding, Eve's pudding, Christmas pudding, peasy pudding. Not a fan of kippers. <laughs> all right. So what kind of pudding is made from split peas. Aiden, have you made this? Bread and butter pudding? I don't think it's that. Eve's pudding, Christmas pudding. Hopefully that's not Christmas pudding or peasy pudding. I would go with peasy pudding, but because it's peas. Peasy pudding, please. <sighs> that just doesn't sound right. Not a fan of kippers. All right. So do, 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 do. The second one, Eve's pudding. You want Eve's pudding, Aiden? Aiden has an, yeah, he does. <laughs> he should get it right though. So Aiden, Eve's, I think. Anybody else have, have it? I would think peasy pudding. What do y'all think? Aiden doesn't know. Aunt B, what do you think? Eve's pudding? Peasy pudding. Eve's, I think. Uh, yeah, it's some kind of pudding. It says, which kind of pudding is made from split peas? Is it ease pudding or peasy pudding? I don't think it's those two. Peasy? Yeah, pudding from peas. <laughs> Sounds nasty, right, Jay? All right, so all right, so who, peasy says on B. Jay, you're split. Jay, pick one. Ease or peasy? It's up to Jay. Oh, Janice says peasy. Wait a minute, we have peasy. Okay, so Aiden says Eve's. Janice says peasy and Aunt B says peasy and Jay has his own. He's going to say easy. <laughs> All right. Peasy pudding. Oh, we got, we got it right. Aiden, it's peasy pudding. You better watch. Look at that. The Brits love their puddings, obviously blood pudding and everything. And they often they're savory rather than sweet. Please pudding is please pudding is chiefly made from yellow split peas, which makes a perfect side for someone trying to watch their sugar intake. Bam. Yes. Bam. All right. So 72% all knew everybody knew that except for Aiden. <laughs> well done. That's right. We have, Oh, next question. Is that it? Uh Oh, what ingredient is a toad in the classic English toad in the hole? Egg, sausage, onion, or orange peel? Oh, I think you've done this one before, Aiden. And I'm going to say egg. Is it really? I don't know what it is. Uh, it just sounds awful. Egg. Okay. Oh, we got it wrong. Oh, my God. It's sausage. We didn't wait for Aiden's answer. It's sausage in a toad in the hole. I guess they're doing the toad has the has the meat in the hole. The name the toad in the hole is a whimsical moniker for for such a simple dish. Whole sausage 
sausages baked in the savory Yorkshire pudding batter, which we know Aiden does that quite often. Apparently the sausages are meant to look like frogs poking their heads out of the hole. Oh my gosh, look at 64% guessed wrong. Only 20, 26% got it right. <laughs> Sausage New Yorkshire pudding. All right, so we did pretty good on that one. We did pretty good on that one. All right, so um, my my thing is already done. All right, let's flip us around because our, our um, did you like that? Did y'all like that? That was fun. All right, let me put this around because we have to get the, um, the uh, what is it called? We have the ribs in here, all right? And I have a nice little pan right here. This is a pampered chef. This is a very, uh, like a medium pan. It's a very small pan. Okay. Very small. And it's very strong. You hear that? It's not going to warp in my, in my, uh, broiler when I put them on. All right. So we're going to put that down there and we're going to open up our, it's still pressurized. You see this, the, the button is still up right here and it's been, uh, depressurizing for 14 minutes right now. It's away from my cabinets. I'm going to turn it even further away. And I'm going to release the pressure right out of here. Now, my hand's right here. The pressure goes right there, okay? Don't put your hand in front of this. Hello there, Tim Bears. Uh, have a great weekend. I lost video. I think everybody did. I can see why you said egg, though. Eggs are in the back. No, I thought it was like like a hole. There we go. So we're, going to, we're releasing the pressure. There's not too much pressure in it. That red button should fall down in a second right now. Let me see. There, see, it fell down. All right. Be right back, says Andy. Code. Okay, Andy, we're going to open this up, and there's liquid underneath it. So you can put the liquid back in there. You can see how that much liquid are going down there. All right, just put that right down. All right, and we're going to get our ribs out. I'm not sure if I can put them out. Uh, here, let me put it closer to us. So we got our ribs, and they are nicely cooked. All right, they're not caramelized right now because we have to put the um, barbecue sauce on here, okay? And one more. Oh, oh I'm going to get it all over. There we go. All right. So I got the ribs. They're totally cooked through right now. But we need to get a nice, and you see how nice the um, uh, the seasonings are still on here. All right. We're going to get this. Let me angle this down. Got to go. Okay. We're going to get this down. All right. Let me see if I can have you right there. Let me go over here. There. And I'm going to put some sauce on here. All right. We're just going to put our sauce. And just... Put the sauce right on it. Okay. All right. Just marinate it right in there. All right. There we go. I'm going to get a little bit of the brush. And I'm just going to brush my sauce right on here. Right. And we're going to put it in the oven. All right. Just put it in the oven. Just get that sauce. Put it right back on here. All right. We're going to cover it with nice sauce because it's going to caramelize it. All right. Oops. We're going to get it get over here. All right. And that one looks really good, y'all. There we go. Let's get some more. And I got sauce all over my quick cooker here. Yeah. All right. Just use your favorite sauce. I'm using a great value one here that is Sweet Heat. All right. And I'm just going to put that right on there. Oh, yeah. Just slather it on. Okay. Slather it on like you're, you're putting butter on bread, you know. All right. Let's turn this over. Actually, I'm going to do it this way first, and I'm going to put it in my, um, oops, in the, uh, broiler. Oops, there we go. I'm going to get my nice little things out, and we got this. I'm going to put this right in the broiler, and we're going to darken it. It's going to take about five minutes, um, on each side, okay? But I got to watch it, okay? I got to watch it, all right? We got to watch it. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the, um, under the broiler. It has a nice gas, um, heat coming down. Hey, let me see what this says. All right. I think I, I think we got everybody. All right. We got everybody. <clears throat> so we got that going. So we're going to take a few minutes to get that nice and brown. We got our pasta salad ready to go and our, and our ribs. And that is dinner for tonight. I'm done, done, done. Just going to get I got some sauce all over the place here. Now it does tell us to um, do up another type of sauce using the the ingredients in here. Amazing Friday night, Friday night ribs. I love your sheet pan. The sheet pan is phenomenal. That one's a very small one, um, 
uh jay there are bigger ones but for like just my mom and i that one does great we're having shrimp and pasta and cherry tomatoes i got the cherry tomatoes in in the pasta salad that would that i did earlier that's chilling out in the refrigerator over there but the um the pampered chef um sh sheet pans are beyond description they will not warp like when you put um ribs or anything on a pan and put it in your oven and it goes whoop, whoop, that's warping it's the heat is too high for that how do you keep them from how do you keep them so clean mine turn brown um okay so use barkeeper's friend on there and definitely soak it as soon as it's uh, come down to room temperature just get it and um and you can even put a um baking soda paste with water and baking soda and then uh, and line you can line it with foil that's another way to put the foil right on there and let the foil do it but i have a couple people that uh, don't like using aluminum foil it does something to the brain type thing when you cook with aluminum foil so i just i just get baking baking soda paste and then put a little vinegar on there and it comes out really good uh you can actually try mr clean works uh bon ami or barkeeper's friend which is like the um, um, the scouring stuff for for that for what 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 do you mean what oh you mean that yeah ask Cheryl Cheryl's the one who told me don't use aluminum foil I'm like oh my gosh yeah we, I grew up on aluminum foil let me go get the other ones and I'll show you what they look like all right. So I try not to use the aluminum foil ever. All right. So this here, these are the pans. All right. And the one that's in the, um, in the oven right now is actually smaller. It's a very small one. It's enough for the that one pound of ribs. I don't want to put uh, one pound of ribs on, on these things. One is a half sheet pan and this is the large pan. Okay. Half sheet and large pan. And um, they are very strong. If you, um, if you had somebody like, if you're mad at somebody or somebody's breaking into your house, you can get one of these pans. And if you slammed it across your head, they're going to, it's going to hurt because this thing is solid. These are solid. They are, they're not going to whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm doing pork with bone, boneless. Ah, there you go. In the inspot. Yeah, I'm doing that right now, Janice. We're doing it right now. Uh, the ribs are, I already did it in my quick cooker and we did it for 35 minutes. I just seasoned it with, um, this, uh, new Kansas City barbecue and some salt and pepper and I put a little bit of smoky barbecue on there and uh, then we put it into the uh, quick cooker with six ounces of Pepsi which it calls for for um, root beer but you can also use like uh, cherry coke or Dr. Pepper on there and just put it on there for 35 minutes it took about 10 minutes to come to pressure and then when it comes down you need it to depressurize for 10 minutes before you bring them out so all in all, it's going to, it's going to take us, uh, let me see, we've been on for an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, it's going to take 35, 45, 55, about 55 minutes to an hour to get this done. Okay. Yeah. You should get an, <laughs> yummy. I should get an inspo. Instead of getting an inspo, get the Pamper Chef uh, Quick Cooker. It's on sale this month for $157. And I'm going to be doing the, um, I was going to start it today, but I had a migraine earlier, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I do the Pepsi. Air Coke works too. Um, I was going to do the Share Rewards Party. Uh, starting today, but I had a migraine. Uh, I got up, I was doing fine until I went to walk my brother's dogs, uh, dog and take care of the chickens. And I felt lousy. And I came back with just this, like a migraine headache and I had to go lay down. So uh, the Sherry Wars is going to start tomorrow. So that $157, uh, when we get to a thousand dollars on the show, it'll be like 110 bucks or so, you know, when you get that 25% off. Oh yeah, I should get one from you. I'll look it over. Yeah, definitely. And that would help um, put the order in and if the order will stay stay um, in the party until next Saturday when it'll be, um, uh, all the orders are submitted together so everybody gets the same discount, okay? But if you order it and then somebody else orders it, you know, and then we get it to $1,000, everybody can get 25% off like we did last month. Uh, and then this is a thank you for all of you for watching here on HAPS so you can get a discount, okay? Uh, anywhere from 2.5 to, to 25%. And I'm praying that we get to the 25% again this month. That would be awesome that everybody gets 25% off their entire order with Pamper Chef. 
yeah, that would be great. So if you can mention that saying, hey, Alexis is having a pamper chest sale. We're trying to get it to um, 25% and it's it's because of your orders, okay? Don't be waiting for the next person to order. Even if you have a small thing, if you're having like a, say a baby shower coming up or a wedding coming up, order it now. You can even send it to them and save on the shipping. Shipping is free when it's over $150, okay? Otherwise it's $7.95 to ship with pamper chef, which is pretty darn reasonable. If you ever shipped anything, it is very, very reasonable. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, you get a free gift. The free gift this month is the metal straws. I forgot the second thing. Uh, metal straws. Hmm. Oh my gosh. What was this? Oh, ice cream scoop. You can get the ice cream scoop or the metal straws for free when you purchase $80 or more. Okay. But remember when we do the, um, the uh, share rewards that you uh if you order eighty dollars and you get down to twenty like uh if it goes down to twenty five percent off you're gonna be you're not gonna, that uh free thing's gonna be taken out of your your account so it needs to be like uh a hundred dollars is it hundred dollars twenty five no it needs to be high, higher about one hundred and five dollars in order to get the the free one at the eighty dollars okay does that make sense y'all if not just message me and I'll, I'll 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 get with you cool so that'd be great yes hey big crazy how are you doing what are you cooking today we're doing ribs right now oh i gotta look at my ribs y'all oh these are beautiful y'all all right we gotta pull them out oh 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 my gosh y'all we gotta flip this around i gotta show you what it looks like okay there they are it looks really dark on the camera, but it's not it's not that as dark as it as, as it appears. We're gonna flip these around because we need to char the bo bottom side of these, okay? So these are the ribs that we made in the quick cooker, all right? And all I do is season them with the um the rub, the Kansas City rub, and some um salt, pepper, and some smoky barbecue. And we're gonna put this in. We're gonna put this on. See how it's like we want to caramelize. We want it brown like like this one here is. You see how that brown is? That's what you want. That's the goodness of here that the the sauce is baked in on your ribs. Okay. So we're gonna put this back in the broiler and another five minutes, okay? Oops. Oh, that one fell over. Hold on. There we go. Gentle, gentle. There we go. All right. Oh, man. Didn't those look so good? I'm telling you what. Those were so good, y'all. I'll be cooking a fresh rainbow trout that I caught yesterday. Smoked in my trigger grill. All right. Great. Uh, what are you going to just put salt and pepper and a little butter on there? Oh, my God. I'll be cooking rainbow trout today. I caught yesterday smoked. Okay. We got that big crazy. Oh, he's a, he's, Hey, handsome. How you doing? Biggie <laughs> says Jay, the big crazy. That's how big was. Okay. So how big was your trout? Was it like 16 inches or so? This PC cook, uh, cook pot also. I don't, so Vita can make a Greek yogurt with it. Um, Somebody asked me to do the sous vide eggs. I think that's what you're talking about. And yes, you can make Greek yogurt in this, um, the quick cooker. I was actually wanting to make the Greek yogurt in here, uh, Jay, which if I go to a grocery store, maybe tomorrow, and if I get the, um, there's a certain milk you buy that you put in here, that would be so good. Salt and pepper and dill. Okay. Salt, pepper, lemon wedges, and fresh dill says big and crazy. <sighs> I'm coming over if you have another fish. Okay. So yeah, it does do the yogurt. And that was one of, that's on my bucket list to do Jay. So, oh, I got to turn this off. So when you do your pressure cooker, it will keep the food warm in there until you're ready to use it. You need to cancel it out to, to turn it off. Okay. I keep two that were about 18 inches. Wow. Those are big. Those are big babies. Wow. Big babies. Let me see. So 18 inches. Okay. His, his thing, his, his trout were bigger than this. This trout was like this. Where did he get those? <laughs> Most of the trout I know are like 12 inches or that's a nice size trout, even 15 inch trout, but 18 inches. That's a big trout, y'all. Big trout. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying they're big trouts. All right. Um, so anyway, we are almost done. I have a few more minutes before we, we're browning up the, tr uh, the trout. We're browning up the ribs. We're doing pork ribs. We did them in the quick cooker. We just season them with some new um, uh, Kansas City style barbecue seasoning and uh, salt and pepper. 
put them in there with six ounces of Pepsi and uh, let it go for 35 minutes. It took 10 minutes to come to the pressure and 10 minutes to depressurize. And now I have them on the, um, the sheet pan under the broiler to get them nice and brown. You just need a whole milk plus a spoonful of regular yogurt. I got the regular yogurt in there, like Greek. I got the Greek yogurt too. I thought it was Parlite, but there's a, there's a certain milk that makes a better one. Like the Parlite, the one with the red the red words on it. It's a white container with the red words on it. I think that one makes the better um, uh, yogurt on there is what I was reading. And but I was reading that a long time ago. All right, let me get the, my babies. Hello, I'm Mr. Right. And I'm no, 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 no. You're Mr. Left. I'm Miss Right. Yes, Miss Right. Mr. Left. Miss Right. Yeah, of course. All right, so Fairlane. There, that's the Fairlane. That one, that one there. Okay. I caught them at, uh, uh, caught them at, okay. So Big Crazy says, I caught them at one of my favorite places to fish, Strawberry Reservoir. Whew, a reservoir? I thought you can't fish in reservoirs. <laughs> I know you can't go swimming in a reservoir. I didn't know you could fish in a reservoir. Shh. We're not saying anything, right? All right, let's, let's put this over here. Uh, you can see, whoop, angle you down. I got my computer up there. And all of the um, Pampered Chef uh, small appliances come with their own cookbook, all right? And uh, it tells you how to cook everything in here from pot roast to chili. Um, here's a root beer ribs is in this one here. I was going to make this soup here. I know Karen Watterson over in, in Oregon made it already. And she loves it, the red lentil and spinach soup. But then I said, no, I think I want the ribs. So I went with that carnitas. I love this chicken parm. I've made that in, in the quick cooker many times. I haven't done risotto. I did chicken teriyaki, but I don't, I don't like teriyaki sauce. I've done the bread in there. Okay. You just write you, uh, there's a proofer. It, it proofs for you. All right. I think my stuff is done because I can smell it. I can smell it. Oh, man. Yes. All right. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. I think they're going to be done. All right. Oh, look at this. Smell. Look at this. So yes, I have a mess on my pan, um, Jay, that I will need to soak and then clean it all up. Okay. Let me see if I can get this light over here so you can put the light on the subject down there. Ooh. Let's put this light up. There we go. There, that's, that's better lighting, I do believe. All right. So we're going to put a little bit more sauce on here because it looks a little dry. All right. And again, it tells you to make a different type of sauce, but I'm not doing that sauce. I'm just putting a little bit on here. I think we're almost done with this sauce too. All right, there. It's looking good. I'm going to smather it because I already used my basting brush when the meat was raw. And I want to put raw meat. It actually was cooked. It was cooked. We put it on when it was cooked. I can use a basting brush. But look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh my gosh, y'all. I can't wait to eat this. Love me some ribs. That's on the menu for the fourth says big crazy. Yes, says jam, says Jay. This is phenomenally good. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to turn off, cancel my stove. And let me see if it comes right off. I'm going to get a fork. Just to let you know, it's probably going to peel right off. And it does. It's coming, falling. It's falling right off the bone. Like you can see the bone right there. It's just coming right off. All right. Let's eat this part. This is, this one's for you, Jay and Biggie. Okay. There we go. Look at that. It's falling right off the bone. Magazine worthy, Alexa. Yeah, it is magazine worthy. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so tender. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what the picture looks like. All right. There's a Pampered Chef picture. There's the real deal. Thank you for the yummy award. It is yummy. All right, Cooper. Now, all right. So we did up a pasta. We did our pasta up earlier. You'll see this in the beginning of the show. Okay. You'll see this make, making the, the ribs and putting it in. And then we made the pasta. And then we also did a trivia. Okay. We did uh, United States trivia. And did, we did UK food trivia. Okay. <laughs> this looks so good. All right. So that's it for today. 
I love beef short ribs, but I mostly make them in the winter months. Oh, but you know, big crazy. We put, we did this in the quick cooker, so it didn't heat up the oven. I didn't have to go outside because it's raining outside. So if um, the rain um, hinders your plans, you can make your ribs inside of the quick cooker, just FYI, and then put them under the broiler to get that nice glaze on here. Okay. Hey, Aunt B, thanks for coming back in. All right. Um, if you find value in my in my broadcast, please subscribe to my channel. All right. You can sponsor my channel and you can also give awards. All right. Um, they are graciously accepted. All right. And yummy. I like Chinese short ribs. <laughs> I think they're a pork. I have what I, I like Chinese. Short, short, we haven't been to a Chinese buffet in a very long time. So if you find value, please come back. I think I'm going to do another little broadcast tonight, a little fun broadcast, um, maybe around eight o'clock or so. It's six o'clock now. I gotta start. I gotta start. I gotta get dinner on the table. Yum. All right. So thanks for coming in. Oh, man, this is good. Can't wait to get this on the table for my mom and I. All right. Enjoy yourselves. Make sure you be safe this this um uh, holiday weekend. All right. No drinking and driving. If you do, please get a designated driver. All right. Uh, Hawaiian ribs are awesome too. Oh my gosh, y'all. We need to do a rib show. Big crazy, you do those uh, Hawaiian ribs, okay? And Jay Upper, I challenge you to do Chinese short ribs. <laughs> all right, so thanks for coming in, and it's been a pleasure talking to y'all. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Th I do feel better since around lunchtime. I was feeling much better in migraine. This, I somebody said it might be the weather, and I'm like, yeah, because it's been four days with the migraine. Not good. All right, so thanks for coming in. I'll talk to y'all next time. Enjoy your evening. Bye.